In any sport, greatness is difficult to define. Do you look at individual accolades or team achievements? What stats should you value? Does it matter who had the highest peak or is longevity more important? In climbing, the task is even harder. The sport spans so many different eras and includes so many different disciplines that trying to compare climbers against each other is almost impossible. In my opinion, the definition varies too much for there to be any one answer. We've seen too many amazing climbers for there to be a definitive GOAT. However, depending on how you frame it, I think you can pick out 7 climbers from the long history of the sport who each have convincing arguments to be made as the greatest of all time. Some of them are specialists, others dabbled in all areas. The one thing they all have in common though is that they all have a sense and achievements to their name that no other climber alive at the time was able to pull off. They each have their own claim to being the greatest climber of all time, and I'm going to lay them out for you one by one. So without further ado, this is my presentation of the 7 best rock climbers in the history of the sport. This is Making the Case, and today, the best climber of all time is Jozun Bereziartu. Hey everyone, welcome back to Making the Case, where I've chosen the 7 climbers who I think have arguments to be made as the greatest ever. Today, we're going to be focusing on Jozun Bereziartu. First, let's talk about the goal of rock climbing. The sport has so many different forms and disciplines that it's kind of hard to decide, but throughout history, there's always been one central goal. Ascend something that others can't. Todd Skinner put this succinctly when he qualified the point of rock climbing as to effortlessly crank on your hardest projects and to have you fail miserably on ours. Skinner is being tongue-in-cheek here, but that's a pretty good summary of what rock climbing has always been about. Find the perfect line between possible and impossible and haul your way up it. If you ask people who has the most grade pushes of all time, they'll probably tell you Wolfgang Gulish, who set the grades of 8B, 8B+, 8C, and 9A. This is what I said in my Wolfgang video, and it's true. However, even though she was a few years behind, Berezi R2 has the same number of grade pushes as Wolfgang, and she basically climbed the same grades as the famed German crusher. Additionally, she has a bouldering resume that actually means she has more first grades than Wolfgang does. Now, this isn't supposed to take away from Wolfgang at all. There's a very good case to be made for him as the best climber of all time, and you can go watch that if you want. The point is, though, that Beresi R2 climbed just as hard as Wolfgang, but she's not really mentioned in the same conversation. I don't know how or why this is the case, but I think that Jazoon deserves her recognition as the greatest climber we've ever seen. So, let's start at the beginning. Born in Spain, Jazoon began climbing at age 17, which is insanely late considering how good she eventually got. She climbed mostly locally in the early years, spending a lot of time at Onati. Like most sport climbing crags in Spain, this area has a particular style defined by steep overhangs, slippery small holds, and bad feet. From the start, Berezi Artu developed her strength and some really good technique. At 5'9", she's taller and has more reach than most of the other women on the climbing scene, and she quickly learned to use her size to her advantage. For basically the first decade of her climbing career, Berezi Artu was mostly unknown, climbing and training while she kept her day job in the financial services. In 1998 though, that would change when she sent the route Honky Tonky, becoming the first woman to ever send an 8C or a 514B. Now, to really understand the gravity of this, you need to understand what the world looked like for Jazoon Berezi Artu at the time. The early 90s were a transformative time for women in climbing. You had Lynn Hill breaking the 514 barrier, and Catherine Desteville being one of the premier athletes in France. Names like Isabelle Patissier, Robin Herbisfield, and Louisa Lovani were well-respected climbers in the space, and there was some much-needed equality for the first time in a long time. By the late 90s though, things had somewhat stalled. It had been almost a decade since Lynn Hill sent Mass Critique, and no one had been pushing grades in the female space. That would all change with Berezi R2. In April of 1998, she sent Honky Tonky, and this would kick off what is, to me, 
the most impressive stretch of climbing we've ever seen from anyone ever. In the period from April of 98 to May of 2005, Berezi R2 would go on a tear, establishing six new grade bumps across sport climbing and bouldering and sending 16 routes graded 8A or harder. 8A isn't earth shattering by today's standards, but it was a landmark grade at the time and Berezi R2 was miles ahead of everyone else. After Honky Tonky, she claimed the second and third female ascents of 8C with White Zombie and Ras Alt Bazota. The next year she would go on to send 8C Plus with Honky Tonky Mix, and here is one of my favorite Jozun Berezi R2 stats. Over the period of 2000 to 2007, she claimed the first, second, third, and fourth female ascents of 8C Plus. There was no one on the planet who was even close to her in terms of sport climbing prowess. She was simply on another level. In the space of two years, Beresi Artu had closed the climbing gender gap by an insane degree. In 1991, men were climbing 14D while women were climbing 14A. By 2000, Beresi Artu had narrowed that gap to a single letter grade. She didn't slow down. In 2002, she took on Bandasan, a Fred Nicole route graded 9A that had taken the famed climber three years to complete. At the time, it was still respected as a benchmark 14D. What's more, it wasn't really in Berezi r style. Instead of overhanging and pumpy, the route is technical and sharp, with a high crux and an intricate series of moves that need to be worked out. It took her two trips, three weeks, and seven dedicated days of attempts to send the route. This is another thing that I think is worth mentioning about Berezi R2. She wasn't some well-sponsored climber who could jet off around the world to try climbs. As best as I can tell, she held an insurance job while crushing these routes, which is absolutely insane. Her resume still was not complete. In 2004, she flew to Japan and took on Logical Progression, another 9A that had been put up by Dai Koyamada only three years earlier. Then, next year, she would step it up even further when she went back to Switzerland to try her hand at Bimbaluna, a Francois Nicole route graded 9A slash 9A+. Again, it needs to be emphasized just how impressive this is. This was 2005. Sharma had sent biography less than 5 years ago. 515s were still few and far between, 515B wasn't even in the discussion, and here was Berezi R2 moving within half a grade of the best male climbers on the planet. It was absolute larceny. And so, in April of 2005, Jozun Berezi R2 sent Bimbaluna, completing her run of absolute dominance over the sport climbing scene. In this period, she had also put up the first female ascents of V14 and V15. And I feel like I need to say that again. She climbed V15 in 2003. There were no V16s at the time. That was as hard as boulders got. She also was the first woman to on-site 8A+, 8B, and 8B+. If you've lost count, that's nine firsts for Berezi R2 between her sport climbing ascents, bouldering routes, and on-site achievements. She was so far ahead of the rest of the field that it was absolutely absurd. For reference, she sent Bimbaluna 9A slash plus in 2005. It would take 10 years for another woman in Ashima Shirashi to come along and send that grade. After that, she turned her attention towards hard multi-pitch routes, putting up first free ascents as high as 14A with her husband. She's dabbled in ice and mix climbing too, pushing some mind-boggling grades like WI6 or M11 just to really top off her legacy and demonstrate how good of a climber she was. In the period from 1998 to 2005, Jozun Berezi R2 was better compared to the competition than any other rock climber we've seen in history. Even Wolfgang, over his famous stretch of sport climbing ascents, was fending off competitors like Jerry Moffat and Ben Moon. For Berezi R2, there were no competitors. She pushed the sport harder and faster than anyone ever has, narrowed the gender gap more than any other woman, and ticked off a resume of hard climbs like we've never seen before. Her sport climbing achievements, complemented by her big wall, ice, and alpine ascents, paint a clear picture. In a sport where the goal is to climb hard things, 
Perezzi R2 climbed more hard things in a shorter period of time than anyone else ever has, and that's what makes her the greatest of all time.